Millions of years ago in the heart of Eurasia, a group of small tree-dwelling creatures embarked on an epic journey, one that would reshape life on Earth as we know it. These animals were the early ancestors of a group of mammals we know today as primates, which have spread to every continent except Antarctica. But how did primates evolve from these small tree-dwelling relatives of rodents to the world-dominating species they are today? And what does the future hold for primates as humans continue to change the world? The early evolution of primates remains one of the greatest mysteries in paleontology, with the earliest group, the Adapiforms, spreading across much of the northern hemisphere. These ancient primates eventually gave rise to lemurs, the most primitive group still alive today. Lemurs are astonishingly diverse, more so than any other primate group, but how did they come to dominate Madagascar, and why are they found nowhere else on Earth? The story goes back to between 40 and 50 million years ago, to the coast of what is now Mozambique. A group of early primates, seeking shelter from a fierce storm, clung onto a tree near the shoreline. But when the tree was struck down, they were swept out to sea on a piece of driftwood. Against all odds, these animals eventually drifted ashore the island of Madagascar. What they encountered was a very strange ecosystem, with no other primates and only one other kind of mammal. Over millions of years, these early lemurs adapted to Madagascar's extreme conditions, evolving into a very wide range of species. But how did lemurs survive in such a harsh and unpredictable environment plagued by droughts and cyclones. Some species hibernate during the dry season, waiting for the rains to return. Others, like the fat-tailed dwarf lemur, store fat in their tails so they can go longer without food. One of the most bizarre examples is the eye eye, which uses its long finger to tap on wood and fish out insects, acting as the island's version of a woodpecker. In the distant past, Lemurs face predators like the crowned eagle and the giant fusa. Though these predators are now extinct, lemurs have retained their defenses. Species like the ring-tailed lemurs, which are active during the day, rely on their groups called conspiracies. Yes, that's actually what they're called. And alarm calls to warn each other of danger. Meanwhile, the massive injury evolved its leaping ability to escape quickly from both predators in the air and on the ground. Along with the lemurs, the Lorisoas are also wet-nosed primates, who can further be split into two groups, the bush babies and lorises, with one kind of loris evolving a trait like no other primate. Having evolved more recently than the lemurs, around 40 million years ago, these animals have developed a few key differences. Lorises are native to the tropical forests of Southeast Asia, while bush babies inhabit sub-Saharan Africa. Since bush babies range across both dry savannas and tropical rainforests, they have a few adaptations which are different to lorises, most importantly becoming fast and agile, with their strong hind legs that can propel them up to 3 meters between trees, meaning that they can escape predators living on the ground, and reach their food, especially tree gum. This behavior is the polar opposite to the slow and stealthy loris, whose elongated spines and highly specialized hands and feet mean that they can carefully maneuver through the extremely dense forest. The slow lorises have a secret weapon up their sleeves that no other primate has, venom, which serves as a last defense from a predator as they can't quickly escape. The earliest dry-nosed primates still alive today are the Tarsiers. Tarsiers are arguably the most bizarre primates on the planet, with their almost alien-like appearance, and are certainly the group that scientists know the least about, but what we do know might surprise you. Being dry-nosed primates, they are actually more closely related to monkeys and apes than they are to earlier groups like lemurs and lorises, although they split away from other species 45 million years ago. Tarsiers are restricted to only the islands of Indonesia and the Philippines due to their strict requirement for dense tropical forests. And so far, 14 species have been discovered, many with extremely small distributions. Tarsiers are the only carnivorous primates, feeding almost exclusively on insects, which they catch by ambushing them. Being rather defenseless, if a Tarsier is attacked by a predator, it will call out, and males from surrounding territories will team up to try and fight the attacker. 30 million years ago, a troop of African monkeys found themselves stranded on the shores of South America after a long perilous journey across the ocean. Little did they know, this voyage would be the start of a lineage of primates that would go on to outnumber all others. These monkeys, known as New World Monkeys, are widely distributed across Central and South America, from the dry scrub forests of Argentina to the Yucatan Peninsula, although the vast majority inhabit the vast Amazon basin. New World Monkeys have two main traits which set them apart, outward-facing nostrils and a prehensile tail. These prehensile tails 
are most apparent in the spider monkeys, serving as an extra limb, making it easier for them to move through the canopy. Maybe this is why they have been able to spread further north than any other monkeys in the Americas. Although spider monkeys have spread the furthest, the most numerous family are the Calichiricidae, a group of smaller monkeys like tamarins and marmosets. This smaller size is thought to have been an adaptation to their tiny ranges, which became isolated in the Amazon basin when the Amazon River formed, separating chunks of land into islands. Due to the extremely high diversity in this family, many unique species have evolved, like the red-handed tamarin, cotton top tamarin, emperor tamarin, the golden lion tamarin, the silvery marmoset, the pygmy marmoset, or the buffy-headed marmoset. The Cebidae includes the capuchins and squirrel monkeys, with the squirrel monkey being the first American animal to survive in space, whereas capuchins are the only known New World monkey to use tools as a way to crack open large nuts. South America also gave rise to the only nocturnal dry nose monkeys, the night monkeys, which look similar to lorises and bush babies in accordance with their nocturnal behavior. The New World monkeys dominate the New World, however, across the Old World, it is the Old World monkeys that reign. The Old World monkeys diverge from other primates 35 million years ago during the Oligocene. They are the most widely distributed group, spanning from the mountains of Japan to the southern tip of Africa. Lacking prehensile tails, they are just as well suited for the ground as they are in the trees. Two of their most important adaptations are enlarged multi-chambered stomachs, which allow some species to survive exclusively off leaves, and cheek pouches that allow them to temporarily carry more food especially in dry regions. Of the old world monkeys, macaques are the most successful, like the rhesus monkey dominating crowded cities, the Japanese macaque surviving the frigid snow-capped mountains of Japan, or the crab-eating macaque being so numerous that they often eat all of their food source. The family also includes much rarer and poorly understood groups, like the rare snub nose monkeys, the newly discovered Kapunji, the strange proboscis monkey, and the colourful mandrill. The old world monkeys are far more heavily group based than any other kind of primate, with some families like baboons and macaques living in enormous hierarchical troops. The next step in the story of how primates conquered the world are the gibbons. In the Miocene epoch, these apes took to the trees, becoming better suited for canopy living than any other primate, evolving long arms and lightweight bodies, which they used to swing between trees with extraordinary accuracy. The genus Hylobates inhabits the Sunda Islands, Malaysia, Thailand, and Cambodia, being the most successful genus of gibbons. The genus Nomascus, also known as crested gibbons, have a much more fragmented range across eastern Indochina. The Hanan black crested gibbon, as well as the eastern black crested gibbon, are among the rarest animals in in the world, with populations of 22 and 35 respectively. The Hulot gibbons inhabit the northeast portion of the gibbons range, mainly in India and Burma. The Siaman gibbon is both the largest and the loudest, being the only member of its genus whose calls echo through the forest of Malaysia and Sumatra. Relying mostly on fruits, gibbons are important dispersers of seeds throughout the forest, only turning to other foods when needed. Gibbons don't live in groups, with each pair who mate for life controlling their own territories. Their loud calls, which both males and females make, defend their territories, and thus their source of food from other pairs. And finally, we come to the greatest leap in primate evolution, the rise of the great apes, which includes us and our closest relatives. These great apes split away from the lesser apes 15 million years ago, with the orangutans branching off 12 million years ago, followed by gorillas. The final lineage contained the chimps and humans, who split off somewhere between 6 and 8 million years ago. Whilst humans who inhabited open savannas became bipedal, the other great apes remained in the forest and primarily travel on their knuckles. Having the largest brain to size ratio, they are the smartest known life forms to exist. This combined with their precise control of hands and fingers allows them to easily make tools and use them. They also have the longest lifespan of primates. This allows them to pass down knowledge through generations, which could take a long time to learn. Historically, gorillas were more widespread across the African continent, but during the Ice Age, the colder climate reduced their habitats and restricted them to more isolated pockets resulting in the evolution of two gorilla species, the western and eastern gorilla. Each of these species has a lowland subspecies, as well as the mountain gorilla and the cross river gorilla. Chimpanzees and bonobos are very similar in appearance, but became separated during the Pleistocene, which fragmented their range, with the bonobo living south of the Congo River and the chimpanzee living to the north. The orangutans live on just the islands of Sumatra and Borneo, and are mostly solitary unlike the rest of the great apes. They are also the most arboreal great apes, rarely coming down from the canopy. Chimpanzees live in large, complex groups called communities, and are known to even wage war against each other. 
whereas gorillas typically live in family groups led by a silverback. Finally, it's worth mentioning humans. After all, we are the most successful primate, with 8 billion of us living on Earth, far outnumbering the second most populous primate, the Senegal bush baby. Spreading out from Africa, we have managed to reach pretty much everywhere on Earth.